I'm thankful he's here again. And uh, I told him if he does good tonight, we'll invite him back next year. So, <laughs> I'm teasing. I didn't say that, did I? Yeah, he said it. <laughs> okay, that's the problem <laughs> with joking around my son. He jokes back. Praise God, that was a joke right there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. And I want to pray for him real quick, if you don't mind, and just ask God to have His way and for him just to be relaxed and just feel His God's presence and just share, however long if God wants him to ever short but just whatever God lays on his heart and father right now we we bring Joshua who uh, I'm thankful you gave me a son like him that loves you called to minister your word but I'm thankful more than anything that he's your son yes. and Lord right now I pray and agree with those who will agree with me and ask him will you just have your way tonight in this message will you just help him just to bring it the way you'd have him bring it Lord, the length of it's not important. What's important is bringing what you give him to bring, the truth of your word. And we pray you'll help him do that, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. I'm going to just go ahead and turn to 2 Timothy 1 a if you want to turn there. share my testimony. I asked my dad if I had shared my testimony here before, but I don't remember, so. I told him I couldn't remember him sharing it, so. Uh, the two times he was here, so after he gets started, you'll know. <laughs> I guess he remembered. But I couldn't remember him ever giving it. I got saved on October 30th at 4.15 a.m. in the morning. It was in the year of 1997. I was 16 years of age. The night before, I went to a thing called Harvest of Souls. The church was putting on several skits about life. At the end, people were judged by God. Did it scare me? Yes, because I did not want to go to hell. I stayed awake all night, and my dad got up for work and asked what was wrong. I said, I'm scared, and I didn't want to go to hell. I was reading his Bible because at the time, I didn't have my, have my own. I started in Genesis. My dad led me to the Lord that night in the living room on the couch. I lived for Christ until I turned 21 years old, moved in with my sister in Panama City Beach, Florida. I told my dad I said I can handle my faith on my own. I was wrong. He knew I would backslide. I started drinking heavily. Being 21, I wanted to go the way of the world and explore new things. In the midst of all this, I was going to church very active in the young adults group after a while i started smoking pot then something happened to me one night that changed me for the time being that one night i had a realistic dream i dreamed i went to the restroom and looked in the mirror and i started to turn into the devil i had horns coming out of my head as i walked to the living room floor i opened up the floor and saw hell and since my sister and her family were not saved i threw all of them into hell that was a strange wake-up call in my life. I ended up come, coming back to the Lord that weekend and getting baptized. I went to a young adult retreat in Tennessee, and the devil there was still attacking me. He would not let go. Ended up smoking weed at the retreat. So after we got back to Florida, I decided it was time to leave. I figured if I go back home, things would change. So I took a, back, a bus back home. But the devil did not stop attacking me. I got a job, met some friends, and stayed out all night hanging at Walmart. Our town is really small. Glasgow is small, so there was really nothing else to do. I ended up smoking some weed at a party, and one of my friends tried to warn me not to do it. But I didn't listen. 
that was the last time I ever smoked weed. It was laced with some white stuff, made me pretty sick. My friend took me to my car and I went home. After a few days, I changed my life for good. But the next two years, something was coming and it was not about to only change my life, but others around me, our entire family. I'm about to tell you what happened to me one week before December 1st, 2003, the passing of my precious mother. It started out with me having a toothache hurting really bad, tried everything to get it to stop, even tried numbing gel. Not even that would help. My mom got up one night, she came to the kitchen and opened up a big thing of peanut butter and started eating it by a spoonful. Every time I look at the peanut butter, I think of her. Mm -hmm. She was sitting at the kitchen table and I walked in the kitchen and sat down at the table and I told her, I told her what was going on. She asked me, if I wanted one of her painkillers, I had no clue what kind of pill it was. It was prescribed to her. To this day, I have no clue what it was. I took it, and I told her I was not feeling good. About 15 or so minutes afterwards, I, she told me she watched my eyes roll back into my head. She pulled me into the kitchen floor, and I only remember sitting down. don't remember anything between that and her laying me on the floor. I don't remember any of it. I was 22 years old. I was a Christian, and I was ready to meet Jesus. I was never forced into believing in Jesus. I was raised in a Christian home, but my parents were the type that gave me free will. I didn't get saved until I was 16. I was never forced into believing in Jesus. I was, wasn't brainwashed, and I don't feel like I'm brainwashed today. My mom told me she yelled for my dad. They told me they was praying for me. What I'm about to tell you may open your eyes more clearly to the truth. Heaven and hell is real. God and my Savior are also real. So is the devil. After taking that pill, I was gone. There was no imagination. Our lives just changed. My mom thought she killed her baby boy. I woke up on the streets of gold. I was laying the opposite way of how I was laying on the kitchen floor, which I want to describe this. <coughs> so we have, um, so the hallway of my dad's house is right here. And this is the kitchen. I need something darker. Okay. And here's a doorway that goes to the hallway and out to his back door. Then there's a stove here, um, the, the uh, propane stove, microwave. At the time, the kitchen table was well, still there. The kitchen table was there, but shaped this way now. <laughs> but um, this is my bedroom's over in this area, and I was laying this way. Now, can't draw heaven, but um, we're just put this, put it, put a square, y'all can see this. When I woke up on heaven, I was this way. And what I seen up there was I was laying on the streets of gold. And the streets of gold talks about in the Bible that how it's transparent. And when you look through the transparent, it's clear. You can see through it. But the gold of the streets up there are transparent, but when you look through it, you can just keep seeing, 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 seeing it. It never ends. And that's why I was laying there, and all the glory was around. It was like a big cloud of, I don't know, it's too hard to explain because it's just the presence of God was there. Amen. And when I was there, I was in normal clothing. I wasn't in a robe or anything. I guess it's because he... He knew it wasn't, he knew, God knew it wasn't my time. So, when I was laying there, it felt like forever. And, like I said, I woke up on the streets of God. I was laying the opposite way of how I was laying on the kitchen floor. God's glory was surrounded all around. I felt like I'd been there forever. I did not have any worries, no pain. My mind had changed when I got there. I was not worried about anything on earth, not my friends or my family. I wasn't thinking of anything. It was just beautiful. Heaven is amazing. 
If I hadn't put time on it, I was maybe there for 15 minutes. My dad said I wasn't gone that long, but it felt like forever, though. Where I was, I wanted to stay, but God told me that it wasn't my time. His words were, son, it's not your time. Then I heard my mom and dad calling me, Joshua, Joshua, Joshua. I woke up and I couldn't wait to tell my mom and dad what had happened and others about what I seen. In 2 Timothy 1.8, we'll read. <coughs> Be not there, be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord. What he has done in your life, don't be afraid to tell others. Don't Amen. be ashamed, no matter what others say, even if they call you names, yes. or even if they tell you you are a liar, don't back down. Don't be ashamed because what you say may get someone thinking, and that someone may get saved and it will be worth it all. Yes. And as Luke 8, 3, 9, it says, Return to thy own house, and show how great things God had done unto thee. And he went his way and published throughout the whole city how great things Jesus had done unto him. This verse is about the man that was demon-possessed, how he was healed and people couldn't believe their eyes, and some ran into the city and country to tell others what had happened. 1 Peter 3.15 says, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Amen. Psalms 119.46 says, I will speak of thy testimonies also before kings, and I will not be ashamed. Praise Don't God. be afraid to tell your testimony. You may reach someone with it to the kingdom. And what I want to do is tell you a little story. Me and some friends from church where I was going at the time, Living Faith, had went to uh, the local fair. And they were actually, I actually met up with my mom, uh, with dad and Aaron and all them, and at the concert. And I just went ahead and went to the, uh, to the place where all the rides and stuff were, the music park. And I was walking, <coughs> and I decided to walk off a little bit from uh, who I was with and I see a nickel on the ground and I went to reach for it and this elderly black lady had went to reach for it too and I said you go ahead and get it you have it she said no son you get it and we sat there back to argue I said no you ma'am you just go ahead and get it no son you were reaching for it first you go get it so I picked it up I started to walk off and God said, turn around and give a nickel to her. And as I gave the nickel to her, I started to tell her about how my dad expressed to me when we pick up a penny, that's a penny is one blessing for that day. And I told her about that. And I told her, I said, you can take this nickel and I'm going to give it to you. And you can have five blessings today or five straight blessings, five days of blessings, wherever you want to choose. And... I was able to share that with her and I started to walk off I got maybe 15 feet from them and her husband ran up to me and he says I just want to say thank you for sharing what you did thank you and I say you're welcome and Psalm 66 16 says come and hear all ye that fear God and I will declare what the what he had done for my soul In Matthew 10, 32, it says, Whoever therefore shall confess me before men, him I will confess also before my Father which is in heaven. As the Ant version I like to read sometimes, it says, Therefore the one who confesses and acknowledges me for, before men as Lord and Savior, affirming a state of oneness with me, that one I will also confess and acknowledge before my Father who is in heaven. There is a lot of people today that walk around, think they are believers, and say they know Jesus, when actually that is farther from the truth. No truth to it. They are putting on a front, and what is worth, the worse is they go to church and act like the biggest church goer ever. They act like a saint, but God knows, but God knows deep inside they are a yes. hypocrite. Yes. And one day, if they don't get sincerely right in their heart, yes. they are going to go to hell. Yes. If you're going to play church, you might as well go to the bars, to the clubs. 
Church is for those that are seeking God. It's a place for sinners to feel welcome. It's not a place for drama. It's not a place for gossip. It's a place for others to worship God. The church is for people that feel broken and have nowhere else to turn to. Some are seeking something greater. Maybe some are here because they are growing in Christ. Maybe some are here because they feel the Spirit here. If you are not here for those reasons, why then why are you here? They may have been saved at one time, but when they start doing ungodly things outside the church, that makes you wonder about what kind of testimony they are showing others and where they are going to church. Yes. It reflects on the church also, and most people don't think about that. They only think about themselves. In 1 Peter 3.15, it says, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer yes. to every man that asks you a reason of the hope that yes. is in you with meekness and fear. The end verse says, But in your hearts set Christ apart as holy, acknowledging mm -hmm. him, giving him first place in your lives mm -hmm. as Lord. Always being ready to give a logical defense to anyone who asks you to account for the hope and confident assurance elicited by faith that is within you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect. Matthew five sixteen says, "Let your light shine so, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which Amen. is in heaven." Amen. That following weekend, I went to stay with my brother in Louisville, Kentucky. That Sunday, I wish we would have went and met my mom and dad. My mom passed away on Monday morning, December 1st, 2003. She was on kidney dialysis, and she got infection in her arm. The nurse said she would be okay, but ended up dying on Monday morning. My mom was 54 years old, and I was 22. I miss my mom very much, but I know she is in a better place. Amen. And one day, church, I'm going to see her again, but this time it will be for eternity. Praise God. I know what Amen. my mom looks like, and I only know this because God has shown me her in her heavenly form. She is very beautiful. Mm -hmm. I used to have dreams of her almost weekly, but haven't had one maybe close to a year. I even dreamed of her being in heaven, and someone showed me around. Heaven is so beautiful. I have seen Christ several times in my walk. The first time I talked to Jesus, I was 13. He told me I needed to be saved. And a little, in that dream, is kind of crazy, but when we lived in Panama City Beach, in Panama City, there was a Kmart. And when I was dreaming, I kept seeing this guy walking down the street, and I was, he was like getting closer and closer and closer. And as he got closer, he was wearing a robe, and I knew exactly who he was. It was Jesus. So we sat behind the Kmart, which this does exist at the time before the hurricane came. There was a picnic table behind the Kmart. And exactly in my dream, we sat there, and he told me I needed to be saved. Three years later, I was saved. We may not understand why things have happened in the past, today, or what happens in the future, but God does. Yes. I don't understand why things happen, but I know it's just pulling us that much closer to the coming of Jesus. Jesus is coming back. I have dreamed of the rapture. I have even experienced the feeling of it, and God has shown me the rapture several times. I know there is a physical storm coming, and then there is a spiritual storm coming. Yes. Not only has God shown me this, but he shows someone else. And I only know this because I overheard their conversation. This person did not know anything of what God had shown me, so I knew it was confirmation of what is to come. That was about five years ago. My opinion is that I believe the rapture of the church is about to happen. Every time I have, a, have had a rapture dream, we were in a normal society. Nothing was out of the ordinary. I believe personally that day is coming very soon, maybe in the next two years. And I would say that Job... 27 9 will God hear his cry when trouble cometh upon him Job 27 8 through 10 for what is the hope of the hypocrite though he gain though he hath gained when God take away his soul will God hear his cry when trouble cometh upon him will he delight himself in the Almighty will he always call upon God Proverbs 15 29 the Lord is far from the wicked but he heareth the prayer of the righteous Micah 7 7 says, Therefore I will look unto the Lord, and I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. 
John 9, 3, 1 says, Now we know that God heareth not sinners, but any man be a worship of God and doeth his will, he him he heareth. Yes. Let me read that again if you had not hear me. John 9, 3, 1. Now we know that God heareth not sinners. That means if you're living a sinful life, he does not hear your prayers. Mm -hmm. But if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, he him he heareth. Yes. He will hear you if you're doing God's will. Yes. John 5, 14 through 15. Afterward, Jesus find him in the temple and say unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. The man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus which had made him whole. Amen. Again, John 5, 14, 15. Afterward, Jesus find him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. Sin no more. Mm -hmm. When Christ comes to our lives, we are supposed to sin no more. There is the delivery sin and there is an intentional sin. If you yes. don't know the difference, look it up in the dictionary. Intentional sin means you didn't mean to sin. Delivery sin means you meant to sin. There's a difference. As Jesus says, sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon thee. So that means mm -hmm. if you start to sin, things are going to come against you. It's going to be worse. Yes. And you're trying to live that Christian life. But God wants you to sin no more. The man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus which had made him whole. He makes us whole, folks. Yes. When we become to know Christ, he makes us whole. Amen. And that's all I have for you all.